Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the routing aspect uh, regarding the configuration of the DMZ zone. Uh, you remember the first part I described the um, design of the networks. Now in this part we will look to the uh, routing. Now let's go to the inside router. Inside router is here to connect between the two internal segments and also between the internal segments and the DMZ and between internal segments and the outside network. So we go to the inside router uh, first, but before that, let me explain something. Uh, if any one of the hosts in the internal network wants to communicate with the web server or secure web server, this router should forward the packet to the next hop IP address, which is 10.1.1.250. This is the IP address on the multi-layer switch DMZ router one. Now, if any one of the router of the host in the internal networks wants to communicate with the FTP server, so the router will forward the packet to the next hop IP address, which is 10.2.2.250. Now, if the communication between internal hosts uh, occurs between the internal host and the servers on the DMZ, or let's say between internal host and uh, outside network, so in this case, the router will simply forward the packet to the next hop IP address 10.0.0.2. So let's remember this IP address 10.1.1.250, which is next hop for web server, 10.2.2.250, which is next hop to reach the FTP server, and 10.0.0.2, which is the next hop IP address to reach outside network. So let's go to router inside, uh, go to enable mode, now show IP route. Now this is to display the routing, the routing table inside that router. Now we notice that there are static routes. Now these are the connected segments which are directly connected uh, to the router. Now let's look at the static routes. The same thing. If uh, the packet is intended for the web server, which is 10, which is on segment 10.0.0.0. Uh, no, sorry, 10.11.11.0 slash 24. So if uh, the packet is intended for a host on this segment, and of course the host that we have here is web server, the packet should be forwarded to next hop IP address 10.1.1.250. If the packet is intended for a host on segment 10.22.22.0, which is in our case the FTP server, then the packet should be forwarded to next hop IP address 10.2.2.250. Now, if the packet is intended for uh, outside, or let's say internet, uh, the packet will go through the um, default route and it will be sent to the next hop IP address 10.0.0.2, as it is clear here. So, this will be routing on the inside router. Now, let's look at the outside router. Let me just go to the outside router, like this. I position the window. Now I go to the privileged mode, show IP route. Now again, we have to look at the uh, static route. A static route says the following. If the packet sent from outside and is meant to uh, segment 10.11.11.0, then the packet should be forwarded to the next hop IP address 10.1.1.250. Now, if the packet is meant for um, segment 10.22.22.0, the packet will be forwarded to the next hop IP address 10.2.2.250. Now, if the packet is meant for the internal network 172.16.0.0, then send it to 10.0.0.1. If it is meant for the other internal network or segment, then forward it to next hop IP address 10.0.0.1. And as a default gateway, so all packets should go to 196.15.60.2, which is this IP address. So if there is any packet which is meant for a destination network not unknown, so the packet will simply be forwarded to the next hop IP address, which is 196.15.60.2. Of course, you notice uh, here that we have a static route that indicates how to reach the segment 172.16.0.0, which is internal segment. 
and if this is the case the packet should be forwarded to next hop address 10.0.0.1 actually uh, this is true uh, in the case where the server wants to send a reply if for example host one communicate with the server and then the server wants to send a reply and assume that there is a problem with one link here so the reply should always should always find an alternative path alternate path through router outside so outside will provide other solutions alternate path on how to reach internal network in case one link is down so this is the configuration for the outside router now let's go to the DMZ the routers in DMZ again let me just position while the window is well positioned go to the enable mode show IP route now here we have to focus again on the static route uh, Okay, let's focus on the static route. Now I chose that to reach segment, the internal segment 172.16.0.0. The packet should be forwarded through this IP address, next hop IP address 10.1.1.1. And the same thing if the packet is intended for internal segment 172.17.0.0. But in case the packet is meant for an unknown network, it should be sent via the next hop IP address 10.1.1.2 which is this interface of router outside so for all um, all packets intended for the internal segments the packet should be forwarded to this next hop IP address for destinations for unknown destinations packet should be sent to this next hop IP address the same thing with DMZ router 2 now again let me position this window and I type enable mode show IP route then I just display the static route and static route says the same thing if the packet is meant for segment 172.16.0.0 then it should be forwarded to next hop IP address 10.2.2.1 same thing for segment 172.17.0.0 but if the packet is meant for unknown destination it should be forwarded to the next hop IP address 10.2.2.2 exactly this interface of router outside uh, right so we have seen this now let's go to router outside this is very interesting again uh, router outside is uh, provided with how to knows exactly how to read segment 172.16.0.0 he knows how to read segment 172.17.0.0 now in case a packet is meant for an annual destination it will simply forward it to 196.15.62 which is IP address of a uh, router named ISP now let me just click on this router let's see to see its routing table uh, go to the enable mode display the routing table static routing table it has no uh, static route what we have here we have only the connected route right okay so this ISP router is aware only of all the segments to which is directly connected that's fine so we will see later on how uh, routing will be achieved correctly because here we have to be careful because we are mixing routing with other features so ISP does not have any static route configured it does not have any dynamic route configured uh, it is just aware about is directly connected and configured segments uh, now as you notice we are not using any dynamic routing protocol here we're just mainly relying on the uh, static route and this is very important to mention uh, static routes are uh, very very um, important in these situations uh, we don't want to generate routing protocol traffic on the serial link which connects between outside router and ISP because here we might consider that all these network here is acting like a stub network so in a stubs in stub network situation uh, better use a static route and use a default gateway or a default static route to indicate the exit interface for all the traffic meant to reach outside uh, destinations uh, on the uh, inside of course if the network is bigger and larger than this you might use internal gateway protocol uh, the same thing here but of course on the DMZ uh, we might have more control on the routing aspects so better go for static routes instead uh, no need to configure routing protocol on this portion because there is only one one uh, big 
one exit actually to outside uh, this is all for the second part of the video in the next part i'm going to talk about the access list and show you a demo about how to achieve connectivity from out inside to outside thank you this is hakim adish bye